2022 was a terrible year for Disney. Not only did they have massive failures with their newest installments in the Marvel franchise, but their Star Wars content hasn't taken off the way they hoped, their stock price isn't doing so hot, and they've had some major leadership shakeups. But don't worry, we're not going to talk about any of that. Instead, I want to talk about why two of their 2022 animated features were such massive failures. And yes, I'm talking about Lightyear, which released in June, grossing $226 million with a $200 million budget, and Strange World, which came out in November, grossing not even half of its $150 million budget. Meanwhile, unfortunately for Disney, DreamWorks Puss in Boots, which came out in December of 22, has been a great hit, grossing $442 million so far against its $130 million budget, despite being released around the same time as Avatar, The Way of Water, which is a long-awaited by others, not me, sequel to the highest grossing film of all time. Now, I'm sure people at Disney are taking some time to be thoughtful about why their movies are not resonating with their audiences. No, I'm kidding. In typical Disney past the buck fashion, their postmortem on the failures include blaming the pandemic and of course the bigoted audiences that would rather watch beige paint dry than watch a movie with gay characters and empowered women of color. Now I'm gonna pause right here and partially agree. I don't think a lot of parents want to go to the movies with their kids and then have to explain the dynamics of LGBTQ relationships to them afterwards. Their kids, this is supposed to be a fun adventure movie, not a long conversation about the birds and the bees, and why some bees like birds and why some birds don't like anybody and just want to stay home and watch the antique roadshow all the time. I understand why some parents would rather not open that conversation with children until they're a little older, even if they support the LGBTQ community. And of course, LGBTQ themes prevent uncensored releases in certain international markets like China, Russia, and major parts of the Middle East. But that's not the only reason for the failure of these movies. Disney movies of late feel more like a lecture than an actual movie designed to tell a good story. And these lectures are based on very clear thoughts that the writers and creators and producers and directors have. And inevitably, the thoughts prescribe to very black and white thinking. So welcome to Disney's TED Talk, and let's begin with everyone's favorite topic, masculinity is toxic. In the two Disney movies, this idea subtly and sometimes not so subtly pop up everywhere. In Strange World, the concept of being an intrepid explorer willing to brave new heights, new challenges, and go where no one has gone before is generally generally frowned upon. And Jaeger the Explorer is looked at as a great failure because not only did he fail in conquering the indomitable great mountains that surround his small isolated town, but he also fails as a father and as a husband. Jaeger is shown to be unfeeling, uncaring about everyone else, just singularly focused on his legacy and his name. But his son, who is now the evolved man, is unburdened by all that masculinity and outright admonishes his father for everything. In Lightyear, Buzz too is looked at as toxic for his inability to accept help from others, especially from rookies. Uh, hello? No. Especially when he's trying to save a ship full of passengers from an alien and trying to fly them away to safety. Yeah, this seems like the right time to get help from a rookie. Do you need my help? Negative. Are you sure? I'm Buzz Lightyear. I'm always sure. After his mistake maroons them on this alien planet, instead of owning up to the consequences and working to right them, he is shown to be quick to quit. After some encouragement from his several checkbox ticking commander, he commits to fixing his mistake. Finish the mission, Buzz. That's what we do. We're not done until everyone gets home. Only to be told that he should learn to accept what is and make the most of it. Again, the concept of exploration of what could be is considered suboptimal because really he should be appreciating what he has. That is until the diverse characters want to engage in said exploration. Then it's yet again looked at as noble, especially because it's not an individual endeavor, but a group adventure. Okay, okay, so what's wrong with that? Well, nothing, except that there are times that a single individual sees some potential where the rest of the village or the town or society does not and there is value in the lone adventurer willing to risk their life to prove something that others refuse to see. And there is also value in cooperation, in people coming together to tackle big challenges together. There are pitfalls and benefits to both. But these movies can't show that because their thesis is that being a man is bad. Being manly is bad. It was just a mistake. Right Buzz? Oh, uh, just, you know, try to be a little better. 
because the only thing men are capable of, oh, I'm sorry, the only thing white men are capable of is serving their ego and focusing on their greatest legacy of self-aggrandization and are absolutely unable or unwilling to think about other people. That if they try to right their mistakes, it's because of their ego and not for the sake of the greater good. And that the only way they can be fixed is if they abandon their masculine traits and turn into apologetic followers. Now, let's move on to Disney TED Talk number two. There is no such thing as wisdom with age. This most strongly applies to Strange World, where the character tensions between son, father, and grandfather are only resolved once the father learns from the son and the grandfather learns from the father, showing that in order to evolve, we really should be looking at young people for our cues. There is no point in the movie where the son learns anything from his parents or his grandfather. Instead, he relies on what is now considered the greatest asset, instinct. Now, I'm not saying that he should be solely learning from the older folk in this top-down approach. The non-black and white view on this is that lessons and ideas should travel both ways, where the elders offer valuable knowledge from years of experience and wisdom, while the younger people offer fresh perspectives that might not occur to their parents. And together, they can come up with better solutions. There was potential for this in Lightyear where Buzz outright refuses to work with rookies only to find himself stranded with rookies being the only help at hand. This could have been a great moment for his by the book perspective to interweave with their willingness to be scrappy since they don't know what it means to be by the book. Instead, we have the rookies knowing just as much, if not more than Buzz. And this brings me to the massive hero problem that these two movies suffer from. In a movie called Lightyear about a well-known and beloved character since Toy Story was released in 1990. Buzz is unfortunately not the hero. There are very few moments where he's actively solving problems. Instead, he's mostly just along for the ride while diverse characters around him solve all the problems. I mean, if Andy watched this movie in 1995, he should have just bought an Alicia action figure, or at least Socks, since Socks, who's a toy therapy cat, figures out the formula for the fuel for hyperspace on a 60-year-old computer. I'm sorry if that doesn't make sense, but seriously, the toy cat is far more useful than our movie's protagonist. Buzz isn't even commander. This lady is. And then this man is. Buzz is not a leader. He's not a problem solver. He's not even great with combat. He's just honestly there. What? And he's instead shown repeatedly as a quitter. And Strange World is very similar, where it feels very hard to connect with the supposed hero. The diverse side characters are so freaking perfect, so it's impossible to see ourselves in their shoes because there isn't any true struggle they have to overcome or any character growth that they have to experience in order to be successful. They're pretty much out of the box perfect with minuscule hangups, if any. Meanwhile, the protagonists are so flawed, are so unheroic that we don't really want to see ourselves in them. What we like about heroes is their desire to do their best to try to be the best versions of themselves. And what makes us see ourselves in them is their struggle to accomplish that vision. We see someone else go through that, we pay attention. <laughs> retire. You are too good looking to retire. There is a recent movie that did this really well. Puss in Boots, The Last Wish. And here I am going to give a spoiler warning in case you would like to watch this movie, which you definitely should. So skip to the listed timestamp to get my final thoughts. Okay, spoilers starting in three, two, one. Puss is a very heroic character, and the movie allows him to be so. But like in any good story, we see him come across his greatest foe yet. <laughs> For a heroic cat that never feels fear and laughs in the face of danger, the wolf is a shock to the system. <sighs> Especially since Puss is now down to his last life. Consumed with the foreign feeling of fear, Puss for the first time chooses the safer road, burying his old identity and disappearing into a pack of other ordinary cats, living a life so banal that every day passes with hardly any notice. But when he sees the opportunity to reclaim all of his lost lives through a wish, those lives that he didn't value when he had them, 
he jumps on it. Puss is desperately willing to sacrifice anything and everything to once again feel that fearless again. Puss, what's wrong? This movie is really a story about growing up, about realizing the finitude of life, coming to terms with our own mortality and accepting that rather than running away from it. How often do we see people around us unwilling to leave their youth behind, intent upon proving that they're still young, they're still with it, and ignoring all of their obligations, all so they can feel like they'll be forever young. This movie is an argument against that, because while there is wonderful freedom in being young and feeling immortal, hanging on to it way past your time only leads to a life without meaning. For a movie to personify all of that in Puss's fearful flight from death, and then finally his willingness to face up to him was just incredible. The wolf is such a great villain and such a great character. Every time I would see him appear, I would have Puss's reaction and just be covered in goosebumps because of that eerie whistle. Okay, so no more spoilers from here. For a children's movie, Puss in Boots takes itself very seriously, in a good way. Often new movies take the route of just being shiny images for children to look at, with little to no character development, and just this oppressive lecture about taking care of the environment or the perils of being a white man. It's rare now to see a movie that actually makes you feel. And that's what Puss in Boots did. And that's what movies are supposed to do. They're supposed to hook into the audience, into their humanity, and take them on a ride, not just visually, but emotionally and not offer lectures about how they should do better, or that leadership and decisiveness is only good if you're an ethnic woman, but not if you're a white man. No, good stories offer timeless universal lessons, lessons that apply to all of us, lessons about searching for meaning, about making the most of your life, long or short, about learning to own up to your mistakes, as well as fixing them, and being brave enough to go where no woman, no man has gone before, whether that's alone or with some worthy friends. While it might seem silly, of me to be so impressed with this kids movie. I genuinely feel like I've been starved for good movies. So when a good one comes along, I'm pretty damn happy about it. Thanks for watching everyone. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please like and subscribe and share it with someone else who might enjoy it as well. Thank you and I'll see you next time.